God, be in my head and in my understanding. God, be in my eyes and in my looking. God, be in my mouth and in my speaking. God, be in my heart and in my thinking. Good morning, Anderson, family and friends. What a glorious Sunday. And welcome to another life-changing worship experience at Anderson. This prayer written by an unknown author has been set to music and sung by choirs all over the world. It inspires and reassures us that the spirit of the living God is ever present with us to guide our understanding, looking, speaking, and thinking. May you rest in knowing that you are empowered to honor and glorify God throughout your daily rhythm. Take a moment and share our worship experience with a friend. And for those of you who are active on social media, share today's worship experience on your social media outlets. Service will begin shortly.
good morning, good morning, good morning. And we, we worship here together this morning, even though it's raining, they said it is outside. Some people say sky juice is falling, or something like that. But anyway, the, the rain, we welcome it as we would sunshine. And I know you're happy to be here. And those that are joining us online, we're happy to have you as well. Amen. So at this time, let's please stand for our call to worship. And it does read, Lenten travelers, how long have you traveled this road with your gaze pointed down at the dusk and gravel and asphalt as you walk or limp or roll down the path? Lip of your heads, lift, look, listen, reach out a hand. Who are your neighbors on this road? We lift our hands and look to our Savior, who journeys with us and helps us notice our neighbors all around us. This is a Lenten journey mm -hmm. to learn to love God and love our neighbors just as Jesus showed us. Come, let us worship God, who caravans with us on this road to the cross. Come, let us worship. Amen. Please remain standing for our congregational hymn. Amen. Come, let us worship together is our instruction. And so this song simply says that there is power in the blood. Amen. the bird. Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood. Yes, it is. Power in the blood. Would you or me but a victory win? There's one and no power in the blood. And that one power, power, power. Powerful song. Yeah. 
Amen. Amen. Now for our morning prayer, please read along with me. Lord, we know Easter is coming soon, and while we anxiously wait to celebrate your triumphant victory over sin and death, there are still difficult days between now and then, and try as we might, we cannot comprehend love and mercy so great as this. There is nothing perfect about us, Yet you beckon us a hand that soon will be scarred by betrayal, greed, selfishness, pettiness, pride, and apathy. You see us in our imperfections with compassionate and patient eyes as we struggle to rid our lives of all the worldly things that distort, distract, and entangle us. As the cross looms ahead, our eyes and our focus are on your and you alone are our redemption and salvation. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning, Anderson family and friends. This is your Anderson Weekly. Kingdom Kids meet every third Sunday during the 1015 a.m. service in room 110. All youth come to 110 during the 1015 a.m. service. This week at Anderson. On Monday, youth, the Stations of the Cross practice will be held at 6 p.m. in the Upper Fellowship. All youth, you still have a chance to join on tomorrow night at 6 p.m. in the Upper Fellowship. Tuesdays at Anderson is where you want to be, starting at 5 p.m. in the sanctuary with prayer. Come, pray, and get powered up at 5 until 545 in the sanctuary. At 515 in the church parking lot, let's go walking. Every Tuesday in the church's parking lot, come get your 30 minutes of exercise, and you can keep moving right into line dance class at 6 p.m. in the Laura Fellowship Hall with Aaron Honeysucker. Also on Tuesday night in the Educational Complex, it's Line by Line Bible Study in room 110, led by Pastor Linda Williams. Other ministry meetings are also happening in the Educational Complex on Tuesday night at 6. In the choir room, it's choir practice, held every Tuesday at 6 p.m., all happening right here at Anderson. And on Wednesday, the Lenten Luncheon series continues. Jesus sings from the cross every Wednesday at noon. Bring your lunch for this Lenten experience with this week's guest speaker, Sister Rosalind Thomas. On Wednesday evening, there will be a special reenactment of Stations of the Cross, all led by the youth. It's Mary's Way of the Cross. The Anderson youth will go deeper into the suffering of Christ. That's at 545 in the Upper Room this Wednesday night. And immediately following, we will have prayer, praise, and proclamation with this week's guest speaker, Sister Lashana McGinnis. Dinner served at 515 p.m. And on Thursday, we continue the Lenten journey with a six-week class held on Zoom at noon until March 21st. The class entitled The Third Day, Living in the Res- Resurrection. As you continue your Lenten journey, there are resources for prayer and fasting available at AndersonUMC.org. Students, grades 7 through 12, get ready for Reality 101. The UMC Higher Education Ministry is hosting an informative panel discussion about issues and concerns of today's youth. This event will be held on Saturday, March 23rd at 10 a.m. until 12 noon in the Lower Fellowship Hall. Bring a friend or two to this fun and informative activity for teens about teens. Refreshments will be provided. Contact Tabitha Kinney for more information. Join us next week for Palm Sunday, March 24th. Come celebrate and sing as we shout Hosanna in the highest. Part of the shout from the multitudes as Jesus entered Jerusalem. And then the Holy Week experiences at Anderson is a chance to remember, reflect, and rejoice. Starting on Monday with Holy Week Midday Worship at St. Luke United Methodist Church. The guest preacher will be Rev. Dr. Stephen Cook and the guest choir, Anderson's Choir, at 12 noon until 1 p.m. And then on Wednesday, we're back at Anderson at 6 p.m. for the Lenten play titled, And Would You Yet Believe? During the Holy Week production, we will examine our hearts and ask ourselves, what if Jesus was here with us in the flesh? Would we doubt him or would we yet believe? And then on Thursday, Maudie Thursday will be held in the Upper Room, March 28th at 6 p.m. There will be a reenactment of the Last Supper. And then on Friday, for Good Friday, we will carry the cross 
We will begin on Anderson's parking lot at 10 a.m. And afterwards, we will drive to the Anderson Food Pantry to carry the cross in that neighborhood. Saturday is Holy Saturday. The Easter Jamboree and Egg Hunt will be held at 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. on the church's grounds. This all leads us to Resurrection Sunday. Hallelujah to the highest. Come and celebrate the goodness of Christ as he washed away our sins with the blood that he shared for you and me on Calvary. On Easter Sunday morning, we began with a joint sunrise worship at 6 a.m., followed by the worship experiences in the sanctuary at 8 and 1015 a.m. More info at AndersonUMC.org. After the resurrection celebration the following weekend, we're looking forward to Anderson's first women's conference and concert the first weekend in April, April 5th through 7th. The conference registration fee is $100. Men of Anderson, you can join the concert at $50 a ticket. Scan the QR code to get your tickets or go to wovconferencems.com. For the special discounted men's tickets, stop by the table after service or contact the church's office. Mark your calendars for the Adult Ministries Bring a Friend Picnic. It will be held on Saturday, April 20th from 11 a.m. until 2 p.m. at Lafleur's Bluff State Park. A table will be set up in the educational complex for those of you that are interested in attending this adults-only picnic. And then save the date because it's tea time. Sunday, April 28th, backed by popular demand, the Anderson United Women in Faith invite you to enjoy a cup of good tea, good food, and the blessing of Christian fellowship at the Taste of Tea. Sipping, spilling, and serving a blessing. More details to come. Join Team Anderson for the second annual Sister Strut 3K Walk happening on May 18th at Lafleur's Bluff State Park. Everyone registered will receive an official Sister Strut t-shirt. Join Team Anderson. Contact the Cancer Care Ministry for more details. Continue to stay connected with us by texting the word Anderson to 844-251-7878 to get important church news and alerts sent straight to your phone. Also connect with us on social media at Anderson UMC on all social media platforms. More church announcements can be found in today's bulletin. This is your Anderson Weekly. Have a great week. Amen, amen. We ask that you please keep these events in mind for the upcoming week. It's now my pleasure to announce something that's happened this weekend that was spectacular. Over in Birmingham, the Jackson State Lady Tigers won the, not only did they win the SWAC championship, they won the tournament championship. I, I understand that before the game, they, they said, get ready, because here we come. And so things did happen. Amen, amen. But also, they're coming. <laughs> Also, I'd like to acknowledge those who are first-time visitors, and especially those that are online who want to acknowledge you as well, and we want you to go to the chat line and tell us if you're a first-time visitor. But for those that are here with us, would you please stand so that we can acknowledge you. I do understand that the group in front of me here are from Portland, is that correct? Yes. All the way from Portland, Oregon. Oh. And on behalf of Pastor Cook, the administrative staff here, and the congregation, we say thank you and come back to see us. We know that you could have gone somewhere else, but you're here with us. Thank you. Okay, so what do we tell our guests this morning? Yeah. Yeah. It is now time for us to go into the aisle, and let's greet our guests and each other, and uh, extend the right hand of Christian fellowship. Thank you.
Thank you for blessing me and not me blessing myself. Amen. 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 We come now to worship God through our giving. Amen. Hallelujah indeed. And we are so grateful for you joining us in person and, and online. And for those persons who are visiting with us online and from afar, if you would like to give to the ministries of Anderson United Methodist Church, there are many ways that you can do such a thing. You can mail your gift to 6205 Hanging Moss Road, Jackson, Mississippi, 39206. Or you could, if you're in the city, you could stop by and drop it in. You could text to give. You can give online through andersonumc.org. And those of you who are in the building and would like to use those fancy ways, amen, you can scan the QR code to give. But we also love the old-fashioned way <laughs> of you writing and tearing those checks and folding those dollars and cuffing that change. Amen. So in these first buckets that come around to those visitors who are visiting with us, those first buckets are for our tithe and our offering. And our second bucket will be the black buckets that come around is for when you are not here, the hurting world shows up. And because of what you put in the black bucket, the hurting world receives God's grace, God's love, and God's mercy through your giving. So however you give on today, not Henry, not Cook, not, not Williams, but God said he loves a cheerful giver. Amen. But what I'd like for you to do at this time is pray with me. Our offertory prayer. We're not going to race. We're just going to set a pace. Amen. So pray with me. Our offertory prayer. God of ages, we share our tithes and offerings this day.
Hallelujah. Reverend Dr. Marcus L. Thompson was born in Jackson, Mississippi. The Capital City native is a graduate of St. Joseph Catholic School. Thompson earned a Bachelor of Arts degree in History and Spanish and a Master of Education from Mississippi College. He holds a Doctor of Philosophy degree in Urban Higher Education from Jackson State University. Thompson has over 20 years of leadership experience in early childhood, K-12, and higher education. 
Thompson served as the Deputy Commissioner and Chief Administrative Officer of the Mississippi IHL, Mississippi's public university system, where he oversaw IHL staff for over a decade. In this role, all senior level leaders reported to him. He managed all facets of the agency's day-to-day -day operation, including IHL board relations, communications, legislation, technology, data management, and facilities. Thompson was a liaison between the IHL Commissioner's Office, the IHL Board of Trustees, and Mississippi's eight public universities. Over the past 15 years in higher education, Thompson has advised the IHL Board of Trustees, the IHL Commissioner, and Mississippi's public university senior leadership and institutional executive officers. As Deputy Commissioner and Chief Administrative Officer, Thompson led the formation of the IHL ADA Accessibility Services Task Force, which was launched to ensure that individuals with disabilities have equal opportunities to thrive within the university system. The task force includes representatives from the eight public universities, the Mississippi Department of Finance and Administration, and the IHL System Office. Thompson also led the IHL Board of Trustees' efforts to encourage diverse campus environments and ensure that all aspects of institutional practice affirm the IHL's board commitment to access and success, particularly to heightening the participation and achievement of underrepresented individuals. Thompson is a former educator and administrator serving in the Jackson Public School District and the Papaya County School District, where he enjoyed and excelled at the one-on-one -on -one student interaction the classroom provided. He has held endorsements to teach elementary education and licenses to teach English, history, mathematics, and Spanish. He ultimately left the classroom and joined the Mississippi Department of Education to have a broader impact on students statewide. At MDE, he became Chief of Staff and Assistant to the State Superintendent of Education. In addition to his educational experience, Thompson is also known as Reverend Dr. Marcus Thompson to his congregation at Seven Springs United Methodist Church in Raymond, Mississippi, where he was was appointed in July 2022 as senior pastor by the Mississippi Annual Conference of the United Methodist Church. Prior to his appointment, Reverend Dr. Thompson's pastoral experience included serving as pastor of Mountain Ridge United Methodist Church in Brandon, pastor of Little Zion United Methodist Church in Pelahatchie, pastor of White Oak United Methodist Church in Crystal Springs, pastor of United Baptist Church in Pearl, and the pastor of ministries and administration at the 31st Baptist Church in Meridian, Mississippi. With more than 20 years in education and six different pastoral appointments, in November 2023, the Board of Trustees for the State Institute of Higher Learning named Dr. Marcus L. Thompson, the 13th president of Jackson State University. He is married to Latoya Red Thompson, a practicing attorney and United Methodist Conference League leader. They are proud parents of Kaylin, Jessica, and Marcus Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our very own Reverend Dr. Marcus L. Thompson. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Let us now prepare for the scripture reading. Please stand if you might, if you can. And uh, I do want to make an, a, a correction here in your bulletin. It does say that it's uh, John 20, 30 to 33. We will be reading John, I'm sorry, John 30 if in, in the bulletin. We'll be reading John 20 through 33. Thank you. And hear these words. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida mm -hmm. in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Mm -hmm. Very truly, I tell you, Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serve, we, he, whoever serve me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant also be my also servant. Uh, whoever serves me, the Father will honor. 
Now my soul is troubled. My Lord. And what should I say? Mm -hmm. Father, save me from this hour. No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Mm -hmm. Father, glorify your name. Yes. Then a voice came from heaven. Yes. I have glorified it. Yes. And I will glorify it again. Yes. The crowd standing here, the crowd standing there, excuse me, heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Hallelujah. What does the cross of Jesus mean? It's more than songs we sing. Much more than that emblem on your chain. But it means I'm free from the chains of slavery. And the blood that shed won't let my sins remain. Oh my, upon the cross my Savior died. The Lamb was crucified. Showed us love that this world had never. No. Right, okay. Oh, what love divine, true a love you never find. So that we might live, love came and died alone. Hallelujah. Yeah. Well, the cross will always represent. The love God had for me When the Lord of glory heaven sent Gave all on Calvary He did it just for me Just for me Hallelujah Jesus came did is just Hallelujah. for me. Help me sing.
And all God's people say amen. 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 We are truly blessed to be in the house of the Lord today. What a wonderful God we serve. Amen. amen. I'm just honored to be here with my dear friend, Reverend Dr. Stephen Cook. Let's celebrate him this morning. And as well as your lovely first lady, Sister Irma, let's celebrate her as well. And just blessed to be here at Anderson United Methodist Church. I was telling Reverend Dr. Cook, I feel right at home. Amen. Amen. And, and amen. So blessed to have my lovely wife, Latoya Red Thompson, who's the first lady at Jackson State Seven Springs. And our annual conference lay leader, and I tell everybody she's the best volunteer laborer anyone could have. <laughs> Amen. Grateful for her. And I must say to all the Jacksonians who are here today, so would you stand for me, every Jacksonian, whether you're a student, graduate, would you stand for us today? <laughs> Amen. So good to see all of you here. And as my good fraternity brother mentioned, we celebrated that SWAC championship. We're grateful for that today as well. But I don't know about you, but I came to worship and praise the Lord in spirit and in truth. And I am grateful, as the old folks used to say, that have breath in my lungs, activity in my limbs, and that gives me reason to praise the Lord. And also so good, I'm gl glad to see our friends from Portland. Let's celebrate them as well. They spent time on the campus of the I Love, so we're so happy about that. Amen. Thank you all for coming to visit with us. And, and, and as I pondered your scripture uh, for today, there was a theme that came to mind, two things, and those things were the cost and the sacrifice. And as you know, everything in life, for every decision we make, there is a cost. And, and you know, where there is a cost, there is a sacrifice. When we decide to buy groceries, as we know, there is a cost. And you know, paying money for groceries means that we can't spend dollars on those new bags that we like or those new shoes or ties. We have to sacrifice something to get those groceries. And, and when we decide to get married, there is obviously a cost. We have to compromise and give on some things and we know we can't win every battle. And men, you know, we can't win hardly any and stay married. What do they say? Happy, is it happy wife, happy life? It goes something like that, right? So seriously, you know, you, you don't always get what you want as far as watching TV or even the food on your plate. Many times it'll disappear. And many of you know my wife, she's a vegetarian. And so when we go out, I get the meat and she takes all my vegetables. <laughs> but the thing is, there's a cost to being married. You know, when we decide to have children, there's a cost. We have to get them to school, get them from school, and dress them, feed them, teach them, get them groomed, take them to church and help them make decisions and prepare them for life when they are no longer even under our roof or rules. And as I said earlier, I really hate that Cash App was invented. <laughs> Every other day, my son's like, Dad, can you send me money for this? Dad, can you send money for that? And I just hope the technology fails at some point. But we parents, we have to give up a lot for our children. There's a cost to being a parent. So when we decide even what job we want to do, there's a cost. And, and you know, let me tell you about deciding to be the 13th president of the I Love. There is a great, great, great cost. A lot of time, a lot of sleep, well, little sleep rather, not a lot. <laughs> little sleep, but it's the best job I've ever had and I love it being there, serving, but there's a cost to being a university president. So when we decide how we want to be, such as being a perfectionist, there's also a cost. You know, my lovely wife, she wants to do everything perfectly. I mean everything perfectly. And she wants to give the same attention to detail to everything she does, whether it's sweeping the floor or writing a brief. And I, just so you know, we got home 
uh, Dr. Cook last night about midnight from the SWAC championship. She wants to start sweeping the kitchen floor. And I'm like, can we just go to bed or something? But she wants to sweep the floor and do it well, get every piece of dirt off the floor. And I try to help her choose what to do perfectly versus what to do well, and then just what to just get done quickly and move on so she doesn't get bogged down with, with small tasks. And she's great, obviously, at everything she does. So she is easily tempted to do everything in a great way. But there's a cost to trying to do everything perfectly. And, and even when we decide to win, right, there's a cost. You know, I watched our SWAC championship JSU Tigers, our girls basketball team, play yesterday. And I remember playing myself, and I know you all can look at me and can't tell I played basketball. <laughs> but I did. Corey will attest to that. He played with me. I thought about the hours and hours of training and practice and competing they had done to get to that point of earning the title of the regular season SWAC champs and then the SWAC tournament champs. There's a cost to being a winner. And even when we decide to be punctual or tardy, there's a cost. You know, when we decide to be punctual, it can cost us our comfort, can it? Getting up those early birds who made it to the 8 o'clock service, right? There was, there was some challenges perhaps there. And you know, even folks who went to that game uh, in Birmingham, there was a challenge perhaps in getting back to be here this morning. And, and, and you know, it cost some of us some sleep, didn't it? But there's a cost to being on time. There's even a cost to being in this place. But, but when we decide to become church members, there is a cost. And it's, a, it's the cost of your time, cost of your talent, and cost of your tithes. And Dr. Cook, is, he didn't pay me to say that, by the way. <laughs> but when we decide to be a disciple, which is an entirely different thing from being a church member now, you all know that, there is a cost. And, and I'm reminded when I look at verses 24 through 26, here we find our call to discipleship. And we as good United Methodists, we know all about discipleship, don't we? And what it means to be disciples. And following the analogy of the grain of wheat, Jesus extends a call to discipleship. He declares that whoever loves their life will lose it, but whoever hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. And, and isn't that the ultimate goal? To, this is a radical call to prioritize the eternal over the temporal, to forsake worldly desires and ambitions in favor of following Christ wholeheartedly. And that wholeheartedly is an important word. I think it was, was it Big Daddy Kane or somebody that said, ain't no half-stepping, was that his song or something like that? <laughs> it's important to go all the way. We can't go half the way, right? Some of y'all listen to that besides me, I think. <laughs> but, but true discipleship requires a willingness to die to self and to surrender our own will and desires to the will of God. So in essence, there are the cost of discipleship, and a cost is defined as the amount paid for something. So our cost, as far as disciples of Jesus, cost in this scripture tells us are personal selflessness, the fruit of the Spirit, love for others as we have for ourselves, willingness to serve, willingness to follow, Honor from the Father rather than seeking it from others. So let's talk about personal selflessness. And that refers to the act of prioritizing the needs and well-being of others over one's own desires and interests. And it involves acts of kindness, compassion, and altruism without expecting anything in return. And that's the key part of this. You do it without expecting anything in return, and that could be holding the door open for someone, not just holding it open on reg during regular times, but when you're in a hurry trying to get to where you're going. And, and, and that could mean forgiving someone who has wronged you, but not just forgiving, but letting go of the resentment. And, and then love for others as we have for ourselves. And, and, and you know, that's a good one because I like to think we all love ourselves. And we love ourselves a lot. I can look at you and tell. <laughs> And, and, you know, that refers to the concept of treating others with the same care, the same respect and compassion, the same dignity that we want for ourselves. 
And it embodies empathy, understanding, and a genuine concern for the well-being of others. And, and, and that looks like offering a supportive ear to a friend in need just as you want somebody to listen to you. Or showing patience and understanding toward others' shortcomings because we know we all have sinned, right, and fall short. And, and we do that as we would hope others would do for ourselves. And then as good United Methodists, it means that we ought to be advocating for justice and equality for all, standing up against discrimination and oppression as we would want others to stand up for us. And we ought to be standing up today. The world needs us to stand up more. And I say that we need the world to see more of who we are as United Methodists because we have a good thing. And, 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 and then willingness to serve, that refers to a readiness and eagerness to contribute to the betterment of others or a cause, often without seeking recognition or personal gain. That means we do what we do because we don't need the pastor calling our name. We don't need the name in the bulletin. We do what we do because that is what we do. And, and that means assisting an elderly person with grocery shopping or errands or tutoring, tutoring students in need for free or supporting a family member or friend during a difficult time by offering that emotional support. And, and then there's willingness to follow that this scripture refers to, and that's the readiness and openness to accept direction, to accept guidance, and to accept leadership from others in order to achieve a common goal. And we need that in our church, don't we? <laughs> Following instructions from our pastor or leader or supervisor to complete the work because we all should be working toward the same goal. There is but one goal, right? And that one goal is making disciples for Jesus for the transformation of the world. And then accepting feedback and constructive criticism because we can all stand to grow and do better. And being open to learning from each other, from their experiences and perspectives so that we can realize different viewpoints. And, and, and then finally, honor from the Father rather than seeking it from others. And that means that we've got to prioritize our relationship with God in knowing, that, knowing who we serve, who we work for, who we report to, all of those terms we like to use, rather than seeking validation from our family, friends, and all of that. Because, you know, I love my family and friends, but they don't have a heaven or hell to put me in. So we need to know and understand who we serve. And, and, and that means we got to find strength and solace in times of adversity by going in that closet and getting close to God, having faith and trusting him and seeking forgiveness and reconciliation through repentance and spiritual renewal, going to God and asking God to help us through our faults and shortcomings. And then we got to trust God's plan, trust God's providence for our future. Because I'm reminded that wherever God guides, God will provide. So we ought to trust God and know that when we trust God, everything is going to work out. So Jesus was explaining in today's scripture the cost of discipleship. But as we look at cost, a cost is also defined as the expenditure as of effort or sacrifice made to achieve an object. So, so once we have committed ourselves to pay the cost of discipleship, because if you're in this as a disciple, you've committed an expenditure such as a sacrifice is required to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. So if we do the things that I described to pay the cost, we got to in turn turn this business over to, to God for the sacrifice. And you ask why? And that's because sacrificing raises some difficulties. All those things I talked about earlier, my son asking me to cash out, that causes me some difficulties. <laughs> First of all, I don't want to do it. And second of all, he's calling me at my most busy times asking me, can I cash out him something? But, but verse 27, the first difficulty that requires us to turn things over to him is that once the decision is made to pay the cost, it says we will find ourselves in immediate trouble. So if you remember when Jesus committed to the cross, he found himself in trouble. And in verse 27, it says, Jesus says, my soul is troubled. 
He acknowledges the anguish he feels as he faces the cross, and he describes himself as being troubled. And while Jesus was in this time of trouble, he, desi he desired to find an easier way to atone for our sins. You remember what he said, Father, you know, nevertheless, let this cup pass. But, but you know, he got in his feelings, as we do as men and women, and he des desired to find an easier path to avoid that horrible death on Calvary. And oftentimes we too try to find an easier path versus doing things the way God told us to do. But we, you know, like I know, that doesn't hardly work out, does it? But the man in Christ wanted to avoid all the worry and suffering associated with death. But while all these human responses were in his mind at the moment, he responded by submitting to the will of God. You know, and, and so sometimes we're in a place of spiritual doubts or a crisis situation. But when you submit to the will of God, you find that all things are possible through him that loves us. Anybody ever found that out? You may be in a situation where the enemy is trying to attack you and take you out. But when you submit to the will of God, you find that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. If you're in a situation and you don't have quite everything you need, but when you submit to the will of God, you find Jehovah Jireh keeps on supplying every one of your needs. And, and, and if you're in a situation when folk you thought were your friends stab you in the back, when you submit to the will of God, you find that you are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. Somebody can relate to that this morning. But, but as we look at, at verse 29, the second part of that verse in 29, the second reason we must also turn it over to him is because our sanity and state of mind will be questioned when we acknowledge that we heard him. So in these verses, Jesus heard God's voice, but not only did he hear God's voice, he knew it was God's voice. And, and, and so the people around him, you know how people do, they started saying, well, they thought it was the thunder. They thought it was an angel. And how many times have you heard God's voice clearly and you knew it was God's voice, but the people around you started questioning you, questioning your vision, questioning what God told you to do, but you need to tell them God didn't show you, so they should know anyway, right? The thing is, I want to say thanks be to God. We are in when we're in our troubled times, when we face challenges of our faith. God can speak to you. And you need to know that whenever you're in that situation, as God speaks, as the folks say, God will show up and show out in your situation. And I'm glad here that verse 28, the first part of that, when we experience immediate relief, from the trouble, as God said to Jesus and God says to us, he will use your sacrifice to glorify himself. But all we got to do is just yield to him. And that's the key. When we yield to God, God will show us that it's all worth the while. And, and Jesus, in this instance, heard a voice from heaven and he submitted to the will of his father knowing that his death would bring about the redemption of humanity. And, and like Jesus, when we submit to God's will, we place God's will before our own. And, and God's divine plan takes precedence, and, and we do whatever pleases God's purpose. As the one songwriter said, I'll go where God tells me to go. I'll do what God tells me to do. I'll say what God tells me to say. And the key ingredient to this immediate relief is trust. Anybody know anything about trust in God today? That trust reminds us that God will never bring us into any situation that is beyond our ability to bear it. And I don't know about you, but I feel like shouting about that right now. Because I know that there's no river that I can't cross. There's no valley that I can't go through. There's no problem that I can't work through because God's got me. See, this is the thing. God will never ask you to do more than you're able. God will never ask you to give more than you have. God will never ask you to shoulder more than you can carry. God will never ask you to endure more than you can sustain. And God will never ask you to bear more than you can stand. 
And I remember Roberta Martin summed up this characteristic of God by saying, though the load gets heavy, she said, you're never left alone to bear it all. She said, ask for strength and keep on toiling. Though the teardrops fall, she said, you have the joy of this assurance that the heavenly father will always answer prayer. And she said, and he knows she said, and he knows how much you can bear. Anybody glad this morning that God knows how much you can bear? In your midnight hour, God knows just how much you can bear. When your body is racked with pain, God knows just how much you can bear. As tears are rolling down your eyes, God knows just how much you can bear. And I'm reminded of my pillow verse when I'm facing challenges of discipleship. When I'm paying the cost, I already know what the end is going to be. So as believers and as disciples, we ought to be in a constant state of shouting because we already know what the end is going to be. And we know that end is tied to a victory in Jesus. So, so. After we've committed to the cost and find peace in trusting God, in the face of challenges by men and by spirit described in verses 20 and 29, when we sacrifice, when we yield to him and trust him, is through that sacrifice and the glory it brings to God that men are drawn to God. And, and, and that's the key piece here because everything we do ought to be about drawing men, women, boys, and girls to God. So in other words, our sacrifice story brings God's glory. Did y'all hear me this morning? Our sacrifice story brings God's glory. So, so remember that when you're going through your trials, your sacrifice story is bringing God's glory. When you're going through your hurt, your, your sacrifice story is bringing God's glory. When you're going through disappointment, anybody ever been disappointed in here? Your sacrifice story is bringing God's glory. As you go through the storm, your sacrifice story is bringing God's glory. And even as you go through the valley of the shadow of death, anybody ever been there? Your sacrifice story is bringing God's glory. You see, God wants to bring glory to your story, but you got to give it all up to him. And I don't know about you, but sometimes giving up stuff can be a hard thing. But I found that when we put it in God's capable hands, the one that sits high and looks whole, everything works out for our good when we put it all in God's hands. So we need to let God turn your mess into a message and your test into a testimony. Anybody in here this morning got a testimony? Anybody in here this morning ever been in a mess? But I thank God out of my mess, God keeps on blessing. When God is in the plot, even the darkest chapters shine with his glory. And with God as the author, every setback becomes a setup for his glory. I don't know about you. I said, I don't know about you, but I need God to set me up. I need God to position me for the next thing in my life. And I'm glad that God has set me up for the glory after making my sacrifice. And I'm glad this morning that God will hide you from all the things that are going on in your life. I'm glad that God will be a fence all around me. I'm glad that God will be my shield as I pay the cost and I sacrifice for God. I'm so glad. Anybody in here glad? Oh, I'm glad that my God is able to do what God said. And oh, I'm glad. I said, oh, I'm glad that I can stand on the promises of God as I keep on sacrificing for God, as I keep on giving it all up for God. I'm glad that they that wait on the Lord, my God will renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles, and oh, they shall run.
and not faint. Anybody glad in here this morning that I know that God will resurrect you when you're down? I'm glad that God will pick you up when you're falling down. Anybody glad this morning as you make a sacrifice? My God and your God will wipe away every one of your tears. And oh, when I get burdened down, when I'm in the midst of sacrificing, when I get burdened down with my cost, I know weeping may endure for a night. But oh, joy, I said, oh, joy, oh, joy comes in the morning. If God is good, say yeah. If you know God's good, say yeah. Oh, yes, God is good. And all the time, God is good. If I couldn't say a word, I just wave my hand. I'm glad, Anderson, that God is good. He keeps on making a way out of no way. So I'm telling you to sacrifice a little while longer. Hold on a little while longer and know that everything, I said everything, is going to be all right. Say yeah, yeah, yes, everything is going to be all right. Do y'all believe that today? Do y'all believe that everything is going to be all right? Don't worry about the cost. Just keep on sacrificing like Jesus did and everything will work out for your good. And if you heard me, you ought to be shouting right now because I didn't say some things. I said everything will work out for your good. Everything. And you know, in order to do this now, we got to do something and I call it being anchored in the Lord. Y'all know anything about that? There's a songwriter that says, though the storms keep on raging in my life. And sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day. Still that hope that lies within is reassured. As I keep my eyes upon the distant shore, I know he'll lead me safely to that blessed place he has prepared. But if those storms don't cease, and if the winds keep on blowing in my life, my soul has been anchored in the Lord. Though, oh, 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 though the storms keep on raging in my life. Anybody been there? And sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day. Still that hope that lies within is reassured. As I keep my eyes upon the distant shore, I know he'll lead me safely to that blessed place he has prepared. Oh, but if those storms, sometimes they won't cease. And the winds, those old winds keep on blowing in my life.
gonna be tossed by the waves and those currents that seem so fierce. But this is one thing I like about it. In the Word of God, I got an anchor, and it keeps me steadfast and immovable despite the tide. But if, if those storms, if they don't cease, oh, and just in case the wind, it keeps on blowing, blowing, blowing in my life, my soul, my soul's been anchored in, in the Lord, in the Lord, in the Lord. Listen, listen. My soul's been anchored, my soul's been anchored, my soul's been anchored, my, 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 my soul, my soul. Listen, listen, the billows may roll, the breakers may dash, I shall not stray because he holds me fast. So dark the day, Clouds in the sky, I know it's all right, cause my Jesus is mine, it's my soul, my soul, my soul, my li listen, listen, you knock me down, but my Jesus kicks me up, and he sticks by me when the going gets tough, it's my soul, my soul, my soul well listen you knock me down but my jesus picks me up and he sticks by me when the going gets tough it's my soul my soul my soul this is what i like well he'll rock you to sleep even late at night and he'll step right in and make everything all right it's my soul my soul my soul late in your midnight hour he'll rock you to sleep even late at night and he'll step right in and make everything all right it's my soul my soul my soul Everybody's standing, everybody's standing. Come on, put your hands together all over this house. What a mighty word from God. What a mighty word from God. There is a cost, there is a sacrifice, but my soul is anchored. Is your soul anchored today? Is your soul anchored today? Come on, give it up for God today. Come on, give it up for God today. Put your hands together for God today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. If you feel like dancing, that's all right. If you feel like shouting, that's all right. If you feel like waving your hand, that's all right. Give God the glory, give God the praise because he's worthy, hallelujah. Woo! 
doors of the church are open. You can come as a candidate for Christian baptism. You can come by letter of Christian experience. You can come today saying, Pastor, I need you to pray for me. I need you to lay your hands upon me that I may gain strength for the journey. I'm going through it right now. Going through it on my job. Going through it in my home. Going through it with family issues. That's you today, don't, don't walk alone. Just lift your hands up and we will pray with you. We'll pray for you. We'll let the devil know that God is in charge. That God has the final say so. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. 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 Will there be another in this house of God today? We've all sinned. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is everlasting eternal life. If you confess your sin, he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sin and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Come today. Come today. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, the Bible says you shall be saved. Hallelujah. 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 The atmosphere is conducive to healing. Let me say it again. The atmosphere is conducive to healing. The atmosphere is conducive to breakthroughs. The atmosphere is conducive to set somebody free in this house of God today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, church family. We have two coming down for prayer. Yes. Amen. Glory be to God. That they have a mindset to, to come forth. Trusting that we will pray for them in the name that is above every name. I'm going to ask you to stretch out your hands towards these individuals. Father God, we bow our heads in humble adoration unto thee. God, we thank you for your faithfulness. For morning by morning, new mercies we see. All we have needed, thou hand hath provided. God, we thank you for your authenticity. We thank you, Lord, for this worship service. We thank you, Lord, for open hearts and open minds. We thank you, Lord, that the doors are still open, oh God. God, we thank you for, for your word that has gone forth in this house today about the cost and about the sacrifice. And God, as these individuals have come forth today, oh God, we believe in you for breakthroughs in their life. If healing needs to be manifested, Lord, let it be so. Lord, if something is holding them in bondage, let them be set free. The oppression, let it be gone in their life. Reside in the mediocrity, let it be gone in their life. Lord, whatever they find themselves at a neglect, oh God, we pray, oh God, that you would set them free in this house of God today. Because, God, we believe that you don't just have some power. But we believe that you have all power. So God, we say in this house, it is so. It is so according to your word. And let all who agree say amen, amen, amen. Give God a hand clap of praise. Will you embrace, embrace those who are sitting and those that are around our brothers and sister volunteer call them check on them get their names if you don't know their name and say I'm going to check on you this week to see how you're faring not going to let you walk this walk alone I want somebody over here to volunteer to check on this brother this week whoever it is just lift up your hands and let them know over here, who's going to be the person? Who's going to be the person to check on these individuals? Amen. Do I hear somebody saying yes? Amen. Somebody say amen. We're in this thing together. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. 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 brother just indicated his cousin is leaving the hospital 
tomorrow. Thank God he's leaving the hospital. Amen. 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 And she just came out of the hospital. The fairies just came out of the hospital. We thank God for that. Amen. Amen. We thank God that she's out and she's here. Hallelujah. 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 While we're still standing, I'm going to ask Mrs. Thompson and Dr. Thompson to come forth. Amen. We want to bestow some gifts upon you. Amen. To Dr. and Mrs. Thompson, we thank you out of the depths of your heart for being with us today. Come on, put your hands together, Anderson. And let's give thanks for this great man of God and for his lovely wife today. Amen. Come on, show, show them your appreciation. Show them that you love them. Show them that you appreciate them. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pastor Henry, I'm going to ask you if you'll be so kind. And I'm going to ask each of you and those that are joining us online, we're going to pray for Dr. Thompson. Pray for Mrs. Thompson. Pray for all the institution of higher learning. Amen. 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 Oh, God, Stretch out we... your hands, please. God, we pause to say thank you, sir. We pause, oh God, knowing that there are students returning back to these places of higher learning. We still say thank you, sir. We pause, oh God, knowing that they have enjoyed themselves this week, oh God, but, but they are returning to a place of rigorous learning. We say thank you, sir. God, we thank you for all the institutions of higher learning, oh God. We, we thank you for all the presidents, male and female, oh God. We, we thank you for all the professors, male and female, oh God. We, we thank you for all the janitors, male and female, oh God. All that it takes to make up those places, oh God. We thank you in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you that there's a protection in that place that when we send our children there, oh God, you find a way to wrap your arms around them, oh God. We say thank you in the name of Jesus. God, while we're sending our children there, there are those professors there, there, there are those persons there, there are those presidents there that are praying for them, oh God. Now we are praying for them. Here we are, oh God, the church standing saying watch over our schools we know oh God that, that when the devil is on attack oh God we we know that there is something of value somewhere oh God so we thank you for these valuable institutions we thank you for these valuable places of learning oh God we ask you that if you would just build a hedge of protection around them oh God we just ask you that you just keep your arms around them as our students go in and come out, as they go in to learn and come out to serve, oh God, strengthen their hearts and strengthen their minds. Strengthen these places of higher learning. The places that are under attack. The places that are falling by the wayside financially. The places that are falling by the wayside by alumni support, oh God, we actually to be with them. Strengthen the minds of us all that have gone through those places, that, that have passed by those places, that talk about those places, that, that know those places, oh God. Strengthen the mind of support that we can begin to give back from where we receive. And God, for this president, for the public attack and the private attack, be with them like only you can. For the naysayers and the won't sayers. Be with them, oh God, like only you can. While you're protecting him, oh God, we thank you for the protection that's around him. While people are watching him, oh God, continue to watch over him. Continue to watch over his family and their going outs and their coming in, oh God. Continue to see about him like only you can. God, we could cast him at anybody's feet, but we come now casting him at the feet of Jesus for you to see about him like only you can. Heal him and see about him and protect him from 
the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. Use all of his learning and all of his training to expand all that he puts his hand to, oh God. Expand it now in the name of Jesus. Allow the institution to be blessed because of you. And oh God, those people who call themselves yours, see about us like only you can. Every church door that stand open in your name. See about us like only you can. Those of our friends who've traveled from afar, oh God, protect them in their going and coming like only you can. Where there's sickness, oh God, heal like only you can. Where there's pain and suffering, oh God, soothe like only you can. Where there's misunderstanding, oh God, give peace like only you can. And for all that you do, we say thank you in the name of Jesus. As we leave from this place, not from your presence, be with us, guide, guard, and protect us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Put your hands together again. Give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. Acolytes, you may come. I want to say to the administrative council members, will you join us in the Lord Fellowship Hall so we can continue greeting Dr. Thompson and Mrs. Thompson, along with some of our staff. Amen. Amen. We've had a wonderful time in the Lord. We've had a glorious time in the Lord. Thanks be to God. Acolytes come. Receive this closing prayer. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement continue to grant that we may live in harmony with one another, glorifying God with one voice. In the name that is above every name, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, let everyone say amen, amen, and amen. Hug somebody, tell somebody God loves you, and so do I. Give somebody a high five in this house of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.